Domega Logai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them, for which cause they have been designed to walk breath by breath, in the mentoring of the indwelling ministry of Latgar, the Holy Spirit, in order to labor much more than the most being given and needed in our lives for his, for his glorious grace bestowed upon us. To labor the glory of the Lord our God in our lives. As Apostle Paul teaches for us in 1 Corinthians 15, among all than that I have labored, it is not me but by the grace of the Lord our God. The word which has been used over there for labor has a lot more meaning than what we could easily imagine. It is the experience of that exertion what they take. The exertion which we go through, for example, day by day carrying his cross and following my Lord to be his disciple, day by day teaching his word morning one hour evening one hour by becoming his faithful purified gifted pastor teachers in all of this midst the experience what we gain that's the labor what he speaks over there in present christendom dear brethren to calculate while we have been noticing from daniel 2 and daniel chapter 6 he knelt upon his knees and the knees of iron in that image which was being shown to Nebuchadnezzar being later revealed by Daniel for him to understand that there is no Lord God apart from the Lord of a God who dwells. The only Monan Alatanian Tian. And that's what dear brethren, the true Lord of a God who is a genuine Lord of a God who is not the way how the people could think the false gods to be the gods, and what we call them as daimonian idotes, the gods of idols man-made, trying to think and to give image according to the terms of man-made imaginations. Our Lord of a God is very unique and very separate and very, very specific in his terms to say he is the King of glory. He is the Lord of glory. Keeping these things in mind, even many people who go along to have the debates to think, that their gods have been there like the Islams, what they think. And if a question has been arised, why it has been even written in your books, that it is Christ, our Lord of God, is going to come back again to ruin and to rule. They have their own methods of explanations to say that they have been fabricated and they have been put in the Quran, but actually doesn't exist. And is coming for whom? For Jews. Then what is the point of Islam? All these things which they want to reason along in their reasoning mind, which they want to talk along in the terms of their empiricisms but not having the right true faith. Only in Christ we have the true faith. Though we may have the Thilipsan pressure in our soul, yet by the Bible doctrine we can overcome that Thilipsan pressure from this world and make it the Thilipsan pressure of the word of the Lord of our God by laboring for Him, wherewith 
the experience of exertion has been not helped. So dear brethren, day by day when we come over here to kneel down and read the Bible, to kneel down and write the Bible, to kneel down and preach the Bible and teach the Bible, it is not the labor of exertion that has been counted, but the experience what we learn from that exertion. As we have read in Daniel 6 to 12 to teach, he knelt upon his knees and Psalms 95, 6 which has the same code of strong in the Aramaic 12, 8, 9 or 12, 9, 0 in comparison to 12, double 8 to kneel and to bow down. Yet we have something far greater to learn and to understand the concepts of that lesson, dear brethren. In Psalms 95, 7, if Lord of a God is our God and if we are his pasture and if we are the people at his hand, then certainly he demands that we learn doctrine kneeling down. And we learn doctrine the way how we teach every day in the KT theology, the knee tongue theology, where with every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We further learn from the details of this great Bible, what we learn every day, teaching to us that we have to labor by the grace of the Lord our God given to us more to learn in this church age. What a great privilege given for us to witness this truth. What a great impact that we could leave behind on this earth as we walk because we have the word of the Lord our God. For this cause, dear brethren, as we are learning day by day to look what it is to sanctify ourselves, what it is to look the wondrous things of the Lord of God to happen in our life, what it is that he has given for us to show forth our moderation, our mannerism of suitable sustaining or the great demand of the candidature which has been seemingly suitable for this anthropos to believe and to know that we serve such a true Lord our God. Dear brethren, therefore we need to look at breath by breath until and unless we develop in the Lord's mind daily growing up in the knowledge of his will and making our lives worthy for his calling for which cause Apostle Paul said the right duty of the bona fide gifted pastor teachers is to train them up in the fellowship of that God the Holy Spirit breath by breath and the right duty for which cause they have been kept alive on this earth besides their salvation being accomplished at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone when they express their evolution to say that they have believed in their dear beloved son yet they have been kept alive is to be to build up upon our holy faith most holy faith and to be preserving our life and being earnestly expecting the return of the Lord of our God as we look in Jude 120 and upon them those who sin yet our Lord of our God says in verse number 22 extension of his mercy being given upon them because there is a time for everything on this earth a time where the people start with the philosophical thinking beginning with empiricism and they end up in rationalism therefore we walk by faith a man uses all the three systems of perceptions faith empiricism and rationalism but there being a time for everything yet the grace of the Lord of a God for him the time factor being allotted after believing in Christ because he knows in eternity past what is the time factor that has been needed for everyone the same thing what we can learn in Ezekiel 29 and 11 12 and 13 three times being mentioned 40 years 40 years and 40 years and there we read the first 40 years the man and the beast will be cut off the second 40 years it will be laid desolate the third 40 years afterwards I will visit that land so that once again the people could come and dwell in that Egyptian therefore dear brethren if we could compare the term 40 even the great life of Moses the servant of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim the servant of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim the first 40 years he was been there in the prime time to know that till he could come to the maturity age he did not live the things pertaining to the Egyptian term but when the maturity age had come to look and he flee from that place the next 40 40 years was the 40 years of preparation the time being spent in isolation the next 40 years as a leader to guide the people therefore dear brethren every member of the human race who believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has a time this is what an example we can take has a certain time an occupied time or appointed times as we read even in the terms of Job as well in Job 7 1 there is an appointed time a time for the warfare where which you have been called 
to unsheath your swords and fight the great battle for the Lord's glory. Dear brethren, this great work which has been in the term called as Rhino or Rantizo, where our Lord of our God has sprinkled by the consciousness of his clearance of our minds so that we could no longer be in the terms of sin but always separate ourselves from this world and look for the appointed time of our warfare and the time that has been given for us yet we are kids we speak like kids but we grow but but when we have grown up we let go the kid things like was dear brethren day by day growing up in the meditation of bible doctrine from milk to bread from bread to meat is the primary purpose for which you have been kept alive in this church age and dear brethren your moderation to be made known to this answer pass because the lord is near we do not know when is our death neither we do not know when is the rapture but we have to be prepared because the lord god is near keeping these things in mind let us sanctify ourselves the kadosh of the lord of our god whom he serve wherewith he wants to keep the things pure for his work on this earth and where we have read the hebrew word kadosh as a lot more meaning than what we can usually think to sanctify ourselves the word kadosh meant to say to capture the element of being pure which has been devoted to the lord of a god if we are the holy chosen ones to use the word holy of Ephesians 1 4 in comparison to Colossians 1 22 wherewith we have been set before the foundation of the world being made to be holy and blameless and we have to prove to stand besides the presence of the Lord of God to be agnacatas irreproachable demands our true heart and that's what we look in Hebrews 10 22 the word aletheia the Greek strong code 2 to 8 rather than 2 to 7 the 2 to 7 goes to prove in contrast to the idols where they are not genuine but the true Lord of our God likewise after believing in Christ our true heart is been needed a genuine heart which is not like the hypocritical masks of many believers who wear today in their pulpits including the so-called pastor teachers who walk in the mind of their prejudiced thinking to go in the terms where they could please the men and not get themselves separated the life which is being and which has to be purely devoted to the Lord of a God the concept of separation is the right derived meaning over here the Kada signifies a state which people are set aside for the use purely for the worship of our Lord of a God Therefore, dear brethren, the things which we shall not have in us is nothing but a bad consciousness and not having to truly obey the faith of the Lord of our God. That's why, dear brethren, Satan like a roaring lion, Satan the way how it wants to look and think to be not ignorant about such cunning fables how we have to be aware you should be always dependent upon with a willing readily obedience in comparison to conscious dependence upon his spirit moment by moment the Reagan Baka moment by moment in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit yet in that fellowship a time for everything a time to joy a time to hate a time to love the time to hate where Christ our Lord of God says love your labors love your love your enemy love your your enemy as you love yourself or the way how he calls for us love your neighbor as you love thyself what do we hate then we hate the things pertaining to those which are anti-biblical the principles where the so-called now pastor teachers are entertaining in the pulpits not to teach the word not to expound the word not to exegete the word but rather replace them with the so-called gimmicks of this master's mind the master's mind being not alatia but false aletheia which is not at all true which is not at all correct which is not at all perfect the word what we can use them that they are not in aletheia not genuine by their deeds so second corinthians chapter 11 where with the meta schematizoans which are not metamorphomai the meta schematizoans can never worship the true lord of a god in the right biblical spirit and in biblical truth what is biblical spirit to use rebound 1 john 1 9 and in fact indeed dear brethren the majority of the shame that could be accounted for you in comparison to Matthew 2 7 when Herod 
privately or secretly wanted to know what was the star and how it was been appearing to them the word calls in the greek akribos 198 of the greek code the same thing what we look in ephesians 5 verses 11 through 13 again we find there to redeem the time according to the demands of the word of the lord of god there we find 198 and here the 198 and 199 go hand in hand to say to make a diligent inquiry rightly translated in the kjv to make a diligent inquiry, inquiring, where in fact indeed the King Herod even sought to diligently inquire if that's the nature of a character of a man who is not a believer in my Christ, to look into the matter so specifically, so clearly, so accurately, then how the present Christendom believers, though they have been called as heavenly citizens, being given for them to be holy as our Lord God the Father is in holy, and demanding for us to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and the way they fail to diligently gently seek and search what is the will of Lord God the Father pertaining to their life. How could they stand tomorrow when they have been said, workers of iniquity, you haven't done the will of Lord God the Father because they haven't diligently sought, but rather yet they want to prove their works in the terms of their metaschematic zoans. By their deeds you shall know them, says the scripture, if they're truly bona fide gifted pastor teachers, then their labor is to daily teach. How true they have to be if they are truly believers in my Christ. Daily they have to come to Bible class and learn the word of the Lord of our God. Morning one hour, evening one hour. There is no replacement, neither there is an excuse. This is an inexcusable job. An inexcusable job where it demands in the life of every believer to know the truth so that the truth can set them free. And how they could come to know the truth until unless there could be a preacher being sent to them, says Romans 10. Every bona fide gifted pastor teacher has a labor, the special agnos of my labor, comparison to Colossians 1.24, where he says, the afflictions which I have to pay for Christ, the Thilipson pressure, what we have in the church, and what is that the Thilipson pressure, when we compare to the Thilipson pressure of John 16.33, it teaches to us that you have something pressure upon your soul. Now upon the church, there is a pressure. What is the pressure? The duty of false pastor teachers who are regularizing to come weekly ones, rather than the right bona fide duty of the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers. The pressure that has to be removed, the stumbling blocks which has to be cleared by daily inculcating the Lord's mind whether they be hearers or forbears their duty is to teach and train them up and when Daniel was astonished for one hour and the word of the Lord of God says in the Gospels when Christ our Lord of God demands his disciples to say couldn't you stay with me one hour then the right work for us in the church age is to teach minimum morning one hour and evening one hour and if that is not been accounted then you will have a tough time at the judgment seat of Christ. The tithe of your time has been given for you. The 2 hours 26 minutes or 2 hours 40 minutes, whatever it could be, that's the tithe of your time which you have to pay to the Lord of our God with the pure consciousness. Earlier than that, we have the consciousness of our wicked standards, phonorias, mischief standards. The standards which being one of the attribute of Satan, which says for us all the time not to give number one priority for doctrine. Whether there may be a death in your own family, you will not go for the death to enjoy over there, but rather you would come to learn Bible doctrine every day. Do you know why? Those who are dead will not worry because they are in the presence of the Lord of our God face to face. Likewise, for everything there is a time, for everything there is a season, for everything there is under this heaven given for us. But the first time to be given for the Lord of our God, kneeling down three times a day and walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, so that you could know whatever did you come to, for example, for your job, for example, wherever you go to serve, in military as well. You're serving it unto the Lord. You're driving, you're driving it unto the Lord. You're repairing anything. You're repairing as if those things have to be presented to the Lord. That's what First Corinthians teaches for us. As we labor, we labor it unto the Lord. That's why the categorization of three departments of 24 hours, what we read, eight hours you sleep, eight hours you work. Among that remaining eight hours, you divide into two categories, four hours each. 
in that four hours we have been demanded two hours 40 minutes to pray to the Lord our God and in fact indeed the remaining four hours what you have you can use for your miscellaneous works the friends and families the social media what you can go through and the greater you spend your time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit you will realize there is a lot much more for you to learn and to think and to forsake all those media and to come back and kneel down in His presence and learn His word because when once you are out of this earth, you are not going to have the same chance again to come back and read the word of the Lord of our God. Have we conquered the 66 books? Have we known what is there in them? If you haven't known, then at least realize to learn about those things by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher so that your holy manner walk of life could be made known to this world and the world could believe in my Christ. That's what we have in John 17, 12. While I was on this earth, I did the work for which you have sent me, Father. Except the son of perdition, I have guarded and I have protected them whom you have given me to my care. The prayer is so meaningful for us and it teaches to realize that this world doesn't have the word, therefore they hate you. And since you tell the truth, the world should hate you. Don't go to give your sugar-coated preachings and say such and such ministry has been done by me weekly once. Throw that out. The stuff what you want to preach weekly once is not at all in alignment with the mind of Christ. These gimmicks have been developed by the so-called false pastor teachers who do not know truly the right burden in, 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 in spite of the way that they pass the decree which cannot be altered of the Medians and Persians in Daniel chapter 6, the duty of the right work or ordained by the Lord of our God, his work on this earth, he went along to pray three times towards Jerusalem, kneeling down. And Psalms 95 7 has a great lesson for us to learn. Because we are worshipping the true Lord of our God, the Lord of our God who demands in us the inner sanctification. If our inner, inner, inner sanctification is not been made, as we will read in Luke 1 17, if they don't turn to the Lord of our God, then how the people could be prepared for the Lord of our God? Your inner consciousness, that's what your soul is so essential changing the facets of your thinking. Therefore, your wicked consciousness may be for some extension, but dear brethren, we have been cleansed by the water of the Lord of our God day by day, because we have taken bath not only just to some parts of the body, but to the entire body, the human anatomy from top of the ear till to the toe of the feet. And in that you have our inner organ called as heart. And therefore we find the things pertaining to Hebrews 10.22 to teach to lesson, to give the glimpse of it, to give you the glimpse of it. Hebrews 10.22, have a true heart, being purged from the hearts, the plural, a true heart, a singular. Doesn't our Lord of our God say for us, when you have your eyes set single, then your whole body will be full of light. What does it mean to say? If we are not able to go and put to death our old sin nature, and if ever we live, we live the life to Christ our Lord our God, then your body will not be having that glorious purpose on this earth. You have your body for the deeds of the flesh to be performed. And that's not a true heart. That's not a true genuine heart. You are representing, though we have one true living jealous Lord of our God, you say as not genuine because you find even other idols as your gods. The greatest adultery what you can compare is the spiritual adultery. That's what the Israelites utterly failed. And they have been given for us an example so that you cannot rise up the other, other gods. You may say you believe in Christ, the only true living Lord of a God, but your heart doesn't believe that because your heart has many gods. Therefore, you love to sin still. Therefore, you love to walk in the old sin nature rather than walking to worship the true Lord of a God, sanctifying yourselves, being wonderful yourselves so that you can look the wondrous deeds of Lord God the Father being performed in your life. That's where the failure is all about. You may say, I believe in the Lord, Jehovah Elohim, the only true Lord of a God, but your heart has been filled with hearts or idols. Little children, keep away yourselves from the idols. When we read in Deuteronomy chapter 16 as well, you shall not rise up the idols in comparison to the way how Yahweh El Elyon, Elohim's standards have been kept. What are our standards? How are our standards? Our standards do not even match to the holiness of the Lord of our God, yet we say we are holy. 
If you're holy, then show forth the standards of your renovation of your thinking. Have you conquered the Bible? Have you at least read the Bible kneeling down once in your entire life? Fireless, we demand you to read seven times the flyer of the heavens in comparison to Genesis 7, 2 to 3. Have you ever slipped the Bible by kneeling down and writing the Bible at least once in your entire life? Slipping the beer is to write in the filth of your translations. Slipping the lion is to write in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Then if ever you want to look the conversation of Acts chapter 15 and if ever you have your thought to say why there was a pause not to think about the circumcision except to follow the Lord of our God and if you want to get yourselves to be circumcised though Paul took and went Timothy to get circumcised when he was witnessing those Jews in the Hellenish or the Greeks writing down the second time in the filth of your translation of the Hebrew Greek and Aramic interlinear then if you have you want to be free from the filth as a mark that you have been free from the filth and henceforth you want to walk only in the Hebrew Greek and Aramic and you want to learn the word of it and teach the word of it with proper dispensing technique of dispensations with the proper isagogic categories and exegesis then certainly go and get yourself circumcised to show forth a sign in your body that you don't have, have the filth any longer and now not interested to go back and look in the translations if ever you want to look you want to look every word in the original hebrew greek and aramaic and for that what will be a remembrance a remembrance of your sign of your circumcision and i'm talking to the bona fide male spiritual pastor teachers i'm talking to those who have been made by the gift of the lord of god to be his ambassadors all the time and the greater work which has bestowed upon us by taking this great work upon our shoulders, by taking this great ministry upon our shoulders. Yet we think by faith alone, in Christ alone, it's a great privilege for us to be saved. Yet the price what you want to pay, though it may not be nothing for you, but you have to lay down your life as a living sacrifice to Christ. Not grudgingly, not murmuringly, not able to develop in your minds the standards of your old sin nature, but with grace will, the free will. Lord of our God loves those who have been given graciously. Therefore, dear brethren, for the purpose for which we have been appointed in the church age, to worship our Lord of our God in spirit and in truth, demands that we give number one priority for Bible doctrine. And if you don't come in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, no matter how much you may memorize or recite the Bible, that is not going to help you. It has to transform the renovation of the standards of your thinking. It has to certainly give you if ever you open up your mouth in the divine oracles, it has to make up your thinking to realize if it is not in the word of the Lord of our God, then certainly you shall not pay for it. And though it may be a million dollar business, you would say no, because that is not been there in the word of the Lord of our God, because you need to honor the Lord rather than honoring this man. How much you want to please this man? What do they have? They have their own old sin natures in them. It's better for us always to be the friend of Lord God, the Father in heaven, as Abraham was been called. And by default in John, he says, every believer in the church age is a friend with the Lord of our God. Then we have to prove our royalty towards the Lord God, the Father in heaven, not towards this man. Though they may be a close friend with us, and if they don't obey to honor my Lord's word, even they are been counted as adulterers and sinful generations on this earth and just for the sake of this adulterous and sinful generations or even to be counted in the terms of those unbelievers to be called the people of perverse and crooked nation generations we cannot grieve and squelch the holy spirit of the lord of god indwelling in us because it is for us to be s with s or to be no with no if any other explanation being given for us or thinking that the consequences where which you can extend some mercy as jude jude 1 22 21 and 22 teaches to us then certainly you have to be aware to pray for them before they could enter sin unto death and if they're entering sin unto that, there is no prayer for you which you can pray for them. And if these friends, though they may be very close to you, if they don't honor Lord's word in the principles, in fact, indeed, they may be your own brother or sister. That's what Christ our Lord of God says in the Gospel of Matthew to teach. Who is my father and mother? Who is my brother and sister? The one who does the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. 
and don't worry you haven't lost anything to leave them and to come to serve the Lord our God you will find much more hundredfold times on this earth even in the things to come in the heaven what a glorious joy of beauty it will be for us when we come back and seek and search and understand that every believer has been depending upon the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to not to grieve not to squelch but rather to walk in the mentoring ministry of him and to prove the worth of calling in the church age isn't it or it will be not a great privilege for us when we go back in the presence of the Lord our God and look and see to realize it will be better for us all the times when the scripture teaches to us if this one hand is been troubling you or this one eye which has been troubling you pluck it out cut it off rather it is better for us to enter in my mind or having to be amputed rather than entering with two hands into the hell being burnt off the reason dear brother and why we say these things is purely because in the church age many believers who call themselves to be true they don't have true heart but they have hearts of evil consciousness hearts of mischief hearts of thinking to play games with my Christ hearts of realizing not that they're dealing with the Lord of a God but having a hearts to realize their own standards to teach the epithumai condition of their soul because being pathos and since it has been diseased condition they have been sponsored by Satan to grieve and to squelch and to deceive the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Besides we have been called to be the people of his pasture to kneel down in his presence and to learn Bible doctrine yet we say we cannot because you don't love to bow your knees, bend your knees. The time will come every knee shall bow, including the so-called. The people in the heaven or in the earth or under the earth. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, including the so-called unbelievers who haven't believed in my Lord. The time including the so-called Zachariah, Sheikh Hamadidah or any other idiot who could think they are having more knowledge. Who haven't known that Bible doctrine is a spiritual phenomena to understand Bible doctrine number one you should be a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and if you're not a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ just forget it no matter how many times you may read no matter how much how many times you may memorize no matter how many times you may go back and search your historical evidences in comparison to the Jews because the Jews yet they may not believe Messiah is Christ our Lord our God who has come who cares and you may prove this, you may prove that, because these Jews do not believe that Messiah hasn't come. No matter what it is, no matter how much it may be, if you are not a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, forget the things pertaining even to the Old Testament scriptures. The enlightenment of the Old Testament scriptures in comparison to Daniel chapter 8 and chapter 7. Do you know what a great privilege it is for us when our Lord our God has preserved and kept them for our edification? teaching to us the millennium over there teaching to us that our Lord our God do not need any of those men who think without us he cannot get along but without him we cannot get along and that's what we find in Daniel chapter 8 and dear brethren this great words what we're going to learn is of a, such a kind of a great importance because when we look upon these standards we see not only the visions about the ram and the goat but we also see in verse number two and three particularly when he lifts up his eyes and saw and behold there stood before the river a ram which had two horns and furthermore when we go back and look the ram with this horn pushing westwards and all the things being described and we also learn the importance of the glimpse what we can go back through the things pertaining to the revolution where the multitudes of the people were been there dear brethren this great words what we have been given in the church age have been so specifically in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to enlighten and to realize 
that we shall be a people of his glory wherewith we have been given this great ministry to be held and to understand though the things that have been obscure in the past of book of Daniel wherewith he says the things trouble my heart and then the angel of the Lord of God was been sent to describe them but here we have not just the angel but we have the indwelling Trinity in us and that Trinity to teach us those things demands that we should be sanctified, demands that we should use the privacy of our priesthood breath by breath, demands that we walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, peripatao, if ever we breathe in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, demands when we are living in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. These things where Daniel was being said to seal up, the same things, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In the book of Revelation, we find not to seal any longer because the times are near and they should learn about these things. And in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you go back and expound the chapters from Daniel 7 through 12, we truly understand that how much of the same subject has been written for us in the book of Revelation, how much of the same subject has been given for us in Second Thessalonians, and how much the things pertaining to the heaven being clearly described, we can learn and call and tag it as an eschatological event. Dear brethren, these things wherewith it has been given, they also include in the 66 books. So it's our primary work and target to master the life of Eusebian principle, the life of godliness, rather than living a life of Eulabians, because we aren't even qualified to become the life of Eulabians of Acts chapter 2 verse 5. Those were of a strict sect, because they should certainly complete the work given to them, and they would be very strict sect. Therefore, we aren't even been there like Eulabians, but yet the word of the Lord of God calls for us in the church age to be far greater than those Eulabians, because we have been called as a new Sabians, and yet we aren't realizing though Christ our Lord our God the Father in heaven has prayed for us we haven't even understood the work of John the Baptist being mentioned far less we could witness like Stephen being filled with the Spirit what we read us today meant to say to be occupied with the Lord our God and to say Father forgive them for they know not what they do if Stephen wouldn't have prayed yet our Lord our God might have had other plans apart from Apostle Paul but yet he says to Ananias, he is a chosen vessel for me, he has to suffer many things. The one by which he has persecuted the church. Dear brethren, today many Christian believers are still persecuting the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit by grieving and squelching. And the so-called pastor teachers are persecuting the church. Apostle Paul realized in 1 Corinthians 15 to teach, I have, I have been the least among all the apostles because I persecuted the church and yet he says I have labored the more and the word for labor what we have understood the experience of that exertion the experience what you have every day to sit and learn Bible doctrine coming and carrying your cross day by day in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit the pain what you feel to sit and yet you may find your mind to be obeying because you're not a serious student about the word of the Lord of our God and yet the same thing what we say in our books what we say in our tapes as well dear brethren if you're not interested you may quit to become not to be the subscriber of these tapes because we are not here to tolerate those respecting things or irreverence things towards my God the Father in heaven we are communicating something which about Lord God the Father in heaven demands us to communicate provided we are in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and yet we also receive our discipline when we don't communicate according to his truth therefore we always pray to Lord God the Father to open up our mouth only when we are weak in the flesh and strong in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit being strong in the flesh according to your terms and thoughts you will teach only sheer rocks of oratory you will teach only the things pertaining to weekly ones neither you will come every day kneeling down in his presence and learn the word of the Lord of our God and expound the word of the Lord of our God kneeling down so that you could fulfill the right purpose of which we are his people and we belong to his pasture dear brethren it demands a temporary sacrifice in your life let the 
people realize it or not if the pastor teacher doesn't have that knee tongue theology when he is been coming down laboring through the soil in the dust and so that if he is not able to make up his tongue to become the panadra describer being trained by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit then such pastor is not a pastor to you he is either a kleptes, lustes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, stiflos or sheros oriented, oriented minded pastors he is a pastor who is going to entertain you he is a pastor who is going to be infidel he is a clown but never he will entertain you to look the word of the Lord of our God and never he will teach you the right purpose of Bible doctrine therefore he says come and assemble over the church for weekly ones but he will never uh, he will never teach to you that we have to be going moment by moment sanctification in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because we do not know when is our death being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and in the calling wherewith you have called you will walk perfectly in it if it is to labor in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, for which you have been kept over there for driving or for typewriting or for things pertaining to the work. Certainly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he will give 100%. You are serving it unto the Lord of our God, not your own. And any mannerism of irreverence, any mannerism of the way negligence to be called, that's not tolerable. Because at one point you show that negligence, you show that negligence at every field. We are serving such kind of a true Lord of our God. He demands in our life as well to dig and to seek every word, every word, every word. We cannot let it go so easily. We need to go back and look and dig in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And we need to come back and teach and expound. And how it is that we can let it go so easily so that these people they are thinking. What is there for one hour we can preach? What is there we can begin our church? What is there we can make our people to come and attend our classes? A double punishment, a severe double punishment to them, James 3.1. Better for them not to become the pastor teachers if it is not according to the gracious gift of Lord God the Father where he says, in Ephesians 3 7 for which cause I became according to the gift of the Lord God the Father for you a minister it's not a simple thing dear brethren everything that we go through on this earth may have a time you can be in the Bible doctrine and make it a glorious time without being in Bible doctrine you can make it a greatest miserable time but for which cause you have been purchased? Who has sealed you and kept you until the day of redemption? Know your Creator. Know your Lord, your God. Do not let it go to build up idols and prove that you are having a true heart in the midst of the congregations before the people. The people are nothing. Your hypocritical masks could be easily opened up because Lord of our God knows you very well what a naked you could be. That's why King David, while the Ark of the Covenant was being bought, at every 30 feet, six goats and six rams to be given to the Lord of our God as a great sacrifice he danced naked because he knew there is nothing that could be hidden before him though the one who has been purchased at the price of a dowry of 200 foreskins of the Philistines she taunts and I wish I would be more base says King David because he knew what was the true glory of the Lord of God And the people may think in other sense. But the Lord of our God knows in which sense David spoke. And the words when the word act when the word records for us, she never had children. Neither he slept. That's the time to hate when they hate the biblical principle to be founded. When they hate to give 100% perfection, not showing any negligence, not working as if the product, but working the total product. Not just delivering the goods, but go giving even the service for those goods being delivered is total product. Whichever calling you may be, including your horse, including your homemaking work if ever you groom it should be as if there is no dust in it 100% clearance to be needed it demands day by day preparation 
Therefore, King David, a man after that God's own heart, says the scripture. A man who is being prepared to carry his cross no matter what. The man even in the book of Psalms we read three times a day, training up his child, and the child remembers in the book of Ecclesiastes, coming back to his senses. What the path he left, the path what David was in integrity. Therefore, in Zephaniah 12, we read, The least will be like David. The house of David will be like the house of Lord of a God. Do you know what a privilege it is to be blessed in those terms? The world may think the Uriah the Hittite case with Bathsheba. Yet, for that cause, he was not made to build the temple, says First Chronicles 15. Lord of a God is not a man who could prejudice. With him walks integrity and righteousness. No matter what it is, he did not even spare Moses when he failed to circumcise his second son. When he failed to honor his word in the midst of the congregations, he never allowed him to enter into that canon. How much you and I could think today, having a hypocritical mask of saying we are having a true heart. You are sowing to the wind. And you will reap war wind. With our Lord of our God, worship Him in spirit and in biblical truth, sanctifying yourselves so that you could be a wonderful one to do the wonderful things of the Lord of our God, in which our calling you have been called to be perfect, to serve that organization, in perfect to take the responsibility of your parents, in being perfect to do for which cause our Lord of our God has given you this labor to perform in your right hand. And if the pastor teacher, we need to be perfect to be prepared day by day. Not to worry about the softly saying that if you could tell the truth so that the people may not give you money. We are not here for money, dear brethren. We are here for the glory of the Lord our God and in His grace and eternity. Pastor has designed for us the things needed for us to walk in this earth. And that could be clearly exemplified in the life of Elijah. With the ravenous nature crow, he sent meat and bread for three years morning and evening and when the river would be certainly growing up to become dry he did not panic he knew already the power of the Lord of a God wherewith he prepared for him and kept a widow who could feed her maybe the argument what she had before Elijah could say to her all those things has called her son the cost the true servants of Yahweh Elyon Elohim now not going against your evolution but telling to you to follow such and such terms and if you say no we cannot it's for your fate to reap we would only say for you to do such and such things because thus said the Lord of a God and if you say no I cannot do such and such things it's your fate when the widow argued with Elijah the incident what we can look and read and understand is that she found a reason for her son to be dead and the reason also including the remembrance of the sins it also may include what all she might have done it also will include the things which she spoke towards this man of God the servant of Lord of a God Anyone who could go and say against the honoring of the word of the Lord of a God and they would say it's not possible. Remember, Lord of a God counts those words. Therefore, he has given us the knees of iron to write it down. Not only just to seven times from the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic to write to 22 times and the grace of the Lord of a God to be occupied with it to write 44 times so that we could be the MGG believers, maximum glorification of the Lord of a God believers in this church age to leave behind this great legendary impact because he is our Lord of a God and if he is our Lord of a God he shall feed his people with his pasture and Psalms 95.7 in comparison to 95.6 where many people haven't even made to come very closer except the TSK treasure of scripture knowledge even the so-called great authors like Spira Zodiathos couldn't come and give it then knelt the knees and they couldn't give the cross reference but we can find that in the Telugu reference Bible TRB and in TRB we find a challenging word 95 7 he was distrust with them because he they knew not his ways 
so is the present Christendom today. The way is only one thing, kneel down in his presence and learn Bible doctrine. In fact, indeed, Christ our Lord our God knelt, says Luke 22, and Ephesians 3 says, the one who was after Christ, the things pertaining to this church age mystery doctrine, Apostle Paul also knelt in his presence. It's not just kneeling for your prayers. Neither is just kneeling down and reading the Bible. It's kneeling down and writing the Bible. To be more specific, kneeling down and preaching the Bible. Kneeling down and listening the word of the Lord of God to tremble at his word. And we know very well, this world will not change. Dear brethren, look upon your personal sanctification in Christ. Look upon your life. If Abraham was been called the friend of that great Lord God, the Father in heaven, for his bona fide duty, what which he has done towards his, towards his calling, and we have been the Gentiles, Thyphemes, as Ephesians 3 6, now being given according to his grace to be the partakers of his glory. And yet are we laboring in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to his maximum work? Are we enjoying the experience of that exertion, kneeling down in his presence and knowing the truth? It is not that labor that counts, that labor what you are going through in exertion. It is the experience what you have learned from that labor that counts. That's the toiling. And we cannot, until and unless we have been driven by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot learn that experience to train us up provided we are before the foundation of the world chosen vessels for the Lord our God and when the time comes in his calling is going to lead us for his work breath by breath in whichever manner he could feel better and since we walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath he demands in our life complete sanctification and if you are not in the complete sanctification process remember the a widow where with Elijah she had a conversation to say I have such and such when the word of the Lord our God comes you should be ready to accept it without doubt in your mind if you have doubts then certainly you are not obeying the faith of the word of the Lord our God neither you will put into action that faith if Abraham would have had doubt to say, Lord, you have given me at my old age how it is, where it is, how can I go and give sacrifice? He would have been rejected. Why many people fail in their lives in the calling of the Lord of our God is purely because they doubt the promises of my God. They doubt when Lord God says, be good and cheerful and steadfast in the presence of the Lord our God be practicing in the holy will of the Lord our God not to grieve not to squelch not to lie neither to deceive the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and yet they doubt that they are the trinity of the Lord our God their body has been made the temple of the Lord our God they doubt and that doubt is saying in the presence of the Lord our God to say that you don't have trust in his words neither in his prophets. The Old Testament says, believe his prophets and you shall be prospered. The New Testament should be believing, believe in the bona fide, gifted, prepared, faithful, male, spiritual pastor, teachers, and you will prosper in the spiritual life. First of all, they don't believe the bona fide, gifted, they believe the miracles and the healings, what they do, speaking in tongues. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, we read, their youth will see the visions and the old ones will see the dreams. In present Christendom, how much of the youth are seeing really the visions? The youth has been wasted upon this young. They aren't even qualified to carry the yoke of the Lord of our God. Yet our Lord of our God to fulfill this is like that of a promise where every believer, a true believer in Christ, a genuine believer in Christ, who is in contrast with the idols of this world, certainly being indwelled by the Trinity. What a privilege it is. But yet, have you known what is to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Have you known what it is to have a true heart in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? With whom you are kidding? Do you think Lord God could be mocked? What you sow that you will reap. Sowing to the wind you will reap war wind. 
do not ever consider your thinking for you in your own terms i am doing great things to the lord but our lord our god knows what are your inner thoughts even that widow might have thought she is doing great things to the lord without asking those questions if she would have done she would have been really a great thing therefore in contrast to the crow crow having no mouth to argue just obeyed and yet we have been given our conscience to think yet we say no lord we don't believe your promises let me try my own will let me try my own designs because you have that reasoning power even the crows also have reasoning powers since they don't have the hands and legs in the terms as we have yet they obey the command of the lord of a god but yet we have been given the free will and the volition in our life yet we don't obey to have a true heart we cover our crow nature of hearts by thinking we have the nature of dove in us to this world we show that to this world Our Lord of a God uses those men who are faithfully prepared. He calls those men who are walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, who love to give their life to Christ. Our Lord of a God demands those men who believe that they have the knees of iron in Christ, and they are ready to give their life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for the greatest calling of all time. our lord of a god depends upon those who truly give their entire life and depend only in christ and it doesn't go to say dear brethren that if you give me such and such things like gideon then and level come the word says thus said the lord he spoke the things will come to pass the widow would have believed the words the arguments have been written for our correction as well do we also argue to kneel down and read the bible do we also argue to say that the word of the lord of our god which has been said in deuteronomy 17 18 and we say no we cannot be the kings and priests though the word says you are kings and priests then and there itself you are lost the group for whom i used to take bible classes for more than a year i said to them kneel down and write the bible that's the privilege what you can have they came up with second corinthians 3 when they could come up with their reasoning rather than believing and occupying with that work certainly their reasoning has led them to astray and at the judgment seat of christ the same things will be shown for you because lord god is a witness for the truth what we speak the things what we are having the th- the same things what lord god father lord god the father has as apostle paul following the footsteps of the things pertaining to christ to witness the truth where apostle paul says imitate me because i imitated god the father in heaven and the marine ma care for the church and the work of 95 seven of psalms where it says to us very specifically if he is our lord of a garden if you are his pasture then they are inexcusable because you need to kneel down and write the bible not just read but write the bible so that's the way how you receive that's the way you will understand the pasture because the bona fide gifted pastor teacher though it takes 40 years to complete many of the people are not interested to complete neither they are aware that they should complete the entire bible to make them pure from their own blood and yet they go along week by week as if they are going to stay over here for more than 1000 years on this earth the times of me are in thy hand said david in the book of psalms when he has destined or predestined us to the confirmation of his of the image of his dear beloved son even we have the times which we need to pay back to christ moment by moment in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath so dear brethren we shall have a word of prayer and expound hebrews 10:22 
infinitely divine holy father as you're going to show you these things we pray lord god the whole spirit challenges by this message in christ's name we pray so great lord amen hebrews 10 22 the great lesson where many people haven't understood neither being properly expounded we may be approaching with the true heart or let us draw near with the true heart and the things pertaining to their brethren where many people love to approach being not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit yet they say they are approaching the true Lord of our God because they have given great money to the church they have given great singing choir to the church and they say they are approaching the Lord no not at all the word pros arkomai that is to approach to come to a location where if any man would teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words even to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ refers to those who even after admonition persisted in teaching otherwise and did not then accede to sound words here we refer this word for pros akama in the context dear brethren when they come to approach when they come to teach when they draw nearly to our lord our god therefore here the terms refer to draw spiritually and that as we have read in first timothy chapter 1 verse 3 they persist in teaching otherwise doctrine and they do not come to approach spiritually sound words that's what we read even in second timothy 4 2 where though the word says kerusathon lagan the time comes when the people will not endure sound bible doctrine because they cannot come for this pros erkomai to draw spiritually near to the lord of a god how we can draw spiritually and turn unless we are being in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by the confession of our sins through rebound we cannot draw near to our lord of a god if we are not in the fellowship of lord god the father in heaven that's why one hour of preaching is a great difficult time for you to learn you love to have the videos for two minutes for three minutes for five minutes for ten minutes and even the 10 minutes is a great burden for you to understand because you're not drawing to the Lord of our God in the great terms of spiritual standards and we find when Christ our Lord of our God says to his disciples couldn't you wait with me for one hour we find when Daniel was astonished because of the dream for one hour and we find in Revelation 7 or 8 a silence of half an hour that could be for the confession of our sins through rebound then how much more of our should be for doctrine the moments that have been given for you before the beginning of the prayer to confess your sins and get back to sanctify yourselves by using rebound and get back into the fellowship of that great Lord God the Father in heaven that time which has been given to you that may be a silent time because we are dealing in the presence of Lord God the Father in heaven and neither we are interested to deal any longer in the terms of the man's mind to be impressing them what such and such man will think what this man will think what that man will think forgo and forget about the man what they can think look upon Christ what he will think if you still hold that secret sin in you and not to confess still you think you can serve the true Lord with a true heart but yet you say you're serving the true Lord with the true heart but Lord of our God knows very well that you have hearts of evil consciousness in you whom do you think you are kidding with he knows you are eternity past he even knows your eternity future what you will be and how many days more sowing to the wind you want to impress the people to say you are not sowing to the wind but you are reaping war wind by their deeds you shall know them whether they are by Lord God the Father or not says 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 through 14 they mind earthly things they do not have the true renovation of the standards of the thinking neither they have the true metamorphomai but their metaschematizoans transforming themselves into become the angel of light and these are the men who teach weekly ones 
weekly months is not been designed by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in eternity past. When Proverbs 8.34 teaches to us day by day waiting upon the doorposts of Bible doctrine and we know the people don't believe these terms because they think it has not been there in the Bible. Yet let them go and read in the Bible the importance of day by day, day by day. Even what David, even what Daniel did in Daniel chapter 6 where with the king says as continually day by day as it is a regular schedule for you where you go to do and worship that Lord of a God let that God bless you and let that God deliver you the Lord of a God wherewith we have day by day for example if you can have your friend wherewith you can call that she is the love of your century that she is the love of your soul can't you be with her moment by moment thinking about her how to impress her how to be in fellowship with her how to have patience with her because she is the love of your life. Without her, your life is waste. That's what if you think, what you do, you love to be with her all the time. Isn't it? For just the relationship on this earth, if you love to have that fellowship with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend, then can't you be in the fellowship of Lord God the Father, breath by breath, who is the source of all our faith, who is the author and perfecter of our doctrine in this life, and do you not think he demands us day by day, that was in the past dispensation, in the present dispensation, he says, if ever you live, you have to live in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. If ever you live, you have to live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If ever you walk, you have to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It is not just to walk in the terms pertaining to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But he says you have to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In the past it was day by day. In the present it is moment by moment. If ever you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are not even alive to the true life. You are living a life which has been quite loved by the world, but it has not been hated by the world. And the prayer which our Lord our God prays for us in John 17, 14, will not comply to you. Be far from your fellowship with your loved ones. You will know what it is. But how can we be far with the fellowship of that great Lord God, the Father who has designed us, who has called us, who has provided everything for us, the troubles and the sufferings of this world, without Bible doctrine which are going through for your own misery. But with Bible doctrine it is an examination the way half Job's wife would come and say, curse that Lord, but he says you are talking like a foolish woman. That's how Satan uses the last weapon your own wife. That we shall hold fast to the integrity of the Lord of our God, no matter what they think, no matter how they think. And that's the greatest privilege, what we have in the church age, being given to witness, to witness, to witness by believing the truth. And how many days more you think you can survive on this earth? The Lord is near, O Korea's Agas. You do not even know when is your death, you do not even know when is the rapture, but be prepared. If you are alive tomorrow, say thankful to the Lord our God, be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and approach in spirituality with a true heart, having that great confirmation of full conviction of faith, so that the rantizo, the attaining efficacy grace, wherewith you have been purified by the great work of expiation on the cross, which has been collected, and to be pure from the hearts of your faculty of your soul which is able to distinguish between right and evil that's the consciousness so that faculty of the soul demands to choose the right thing and to and to avoid the wrong thing that's the sunerasis or the consciousness or sunedosis of which from you have to have pure from your wicked standards where with the wicked standards the delight in making mischief and the way how you walk in satan's marching beat and since dear brethren having been sprinkled expiation by the cross of christ on the cross from the hearts of your pure consciousness which have to be free from your wicked consciousness and having been bathed and the word which we have dear brethren washing off the living persons when a complete 
body is been washed and not just a part of it and that's the word called as lo -u. you can wash him appear only the outward but through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and by his word you can wash inward that's the people which Luke 117 where apostle where John the Baptist was being demanded to do the people pure outward and inward when they are not pure inward they cannot be the people for outward therefore dear brethren the word what we read epi plus trasso to turn to God and to the work of pertaining to the holiness of the Lord of our God and then this epi trasso demands the inward and wherewith we find the things pertaining to the word prepared it calls for us to make ready in the terms of Hittai Masai, when they are ready in word, that's what we have been looking over here. When you are having your conscience to think, to be cleared by the word of the Lord of our God alone, there is no other water apart from the word of the Lord of our God that could cleanse your consciousness. Therefore, to make ready to Lord the people whom they have been constructed, which meant to say you have to be constructed day by day in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit learning his word for his greater importance therefore dear brethren let us draw near to show forth our moderation to this people wherewith they could come to know and realize what a great calling we have in full assurance or confirmation or full conviction of doctrine what we learned because of the doctrine of expiation doctrine of justification doctrine of redemption or doctrine of the all sin nature being erased of that wall and having for us in Christ now through his cross so that our hearts being free that's again plural not singular the hearts of the faculty of your soul which distinguishes between right and evil and making you to understand the mischieving work of Satan to be cleared since you have been bathed the body by the water of the word of the Lord of God beginning with gospel and constantly being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit making you to take the word diligently and get pure yourself this is really a great privilege what we have dear brethren Hebrew epistle though many claim it to be written by Paul it could be one of the reason the five members who have written and one of the man who has been written over there could be even Apollos dear brethren this great epistle teaches to us breath by breath to understand the importance of Bible doctrine which has to be for the great glory and for the great purpose of his work in the church age and since many men who haven't understood about this great reality because they don't love to sanctify themselves yet they think they are able to sanctify themselves and they're able to make in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by the standards of their own thinking yet not to have the true heart the Alathanian heart let them prove the true heart that they worship the true Lord by coming to approach him spiritually pros erkomai, coming to approach with him spiritually to the standards of Bible doctrine. Dear brethren, this pros erkomai demands for us that we walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And this is a great calling for us in the church age. And as many people to whom this great privilege has been given to be the bona fide gifted pastor teachers, let them walk in the fellowship of the Lord of our God and do their duty to Kerusothon Lagan for the Merinma care of the church. Kerusothon Lagan, preach the word in season or out of season, fulfilling Colossians 4, 2 through 6. And that's the great cross reference what we can have for which cause Apostle Paul says, I abound in the change to preach this mystery doctrine. And dear brethren, as much as we have to learn from the word of the Lord our God, breath by breath, let us walk through in his fellowship, let us learn in his fellowship, and enjoy the great work of his will, for which cause he has kept us alive. So dear brethren, we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as our Lord our God expounds for us further in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to that God, my Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. 
Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sothan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one Dharma my witnesses in Berlin Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have to approach Thee with the true spiritual life, the true spirituality of being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by sanctifying ourselves and through rebound. Father, Help us, O oh Lord, to do thy will for which cause you have kept us alive on this earth. So that Sovereign Lord, as the way John the Baptist made ready and made the people for you to be prepared, constructed through the word, in the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher which you have given to us, O oh Lord, help us also to construct and make a people ready for thy glory. See if there is an offensive in us, O oh Lord, and those believers who are coming to thy will as well, O oh Lord, if they are approaching with the hearts of their conscious wickedness, Lord, crunch them out because they are also been bathed in thy fellowship if they believe and if the true believers in thee and to come and worship thee approach thee with a true heart the true heart of repentance the true heart of knowing the lord of a god's word the true heart of repent the true heart of renovation of the standards of your thinking in christ matchless peerless gracious name we pray father may lord god the holy spirit enlighten us in these terms amen